So this is the new DJI Action 4. It's over 100 degrees right now. We've been beating these things up like crazy, but we've got a brand new sensor, tons of new features in this. So I'm really curious if this is gonna be up to the task and we are testing this out with some really awesome carts that are racing around here right now. So check this out, Action 4. It's gonna be insane. <laughs> So I do feel like Techtober started a bit early this year because this morning I posted a video on the DJI Air 3. And then last week we had the Sony a6700. Plus some new lenses and gear from them. And then next week, let's just say that there's more on the way. So subscribe and definitely hit me up in the comments with what's on your mind because I try to respond to every question I get in the comments. Plus I do have some BTS and stuff like that. Uh, some pretty crazy car shoots as well over on IG. But now we have the DJI Action 4. And the biggest change for the Action 4 is going to be the sensor. If I had to pick any area of this camera to upgrade, the sensor would definitely be it. So now it clocks in at one over 1.3 inches up from one over 1.7 inches in the Action 3. Now, both of those are still gonna be larger than the GoPro 11. And so this is gonna mean that you're gonna get some better quality overall, improve low light performance, improve dynamic range, and you're still gonna be getting 4K up to 120 frames per second with 10 bit if you use the D-Log M profile. Plus the D-Log gives you a bit more room in post to do some color grading. And actually DJI gives you quite a bit of customization for like color profiles, so you can really fine tune this to either get the best look straight out of camera or the best look in post with some room for color grading. And really where you start to notice that the most is gonna be as the light gets a little bit lower. So even in my studio lighting here, the GoPro 11 just struggled quite a bit with noise. It was just a more mushy kind of processed video kind of look while the Action 4 kept a bit more of that like clean flat look that you would almost expect to see in like higher end cameras. And in addition to the 4K at 120, if you do drop it down in 1080p, you can get 240 frames per second if you want that crazy slow motion action. Another advantage is gonna be the lens. And I think this actually started with the Action 3, but DJI packs in a 155 degree field of view, which is just crazy wide but it also doesn't have as much distortion as I expected. And sometimes you really want that super wide angle look, uh, especially it becomes more immersive. So when we were driving around in the cross carts, especially having that extra room to see the cockpit was perfect. But when you start to notice a difference is when you put the GoPro side by side, that's when the DJI, you can tell it's a little bit wider. Now, if you want that super wide look on the GoPro, you can, but it's going to be much more fisheye and it really warps the sides like crazy. And even if you put the DJI in its widest mode, I find that the distortion is just a bit more controlled. Plus, it's still going to have that wider field of view. So whether you want to keep things more linear, but still get a pretty wide field or just the widest you can get in general, the DJI action camera does it really, really well. Now, spending a day shooting those cross carts, was actually pretty awesome. Uh, definitely coated in a few layers of dirt though. What wasn't so awesome is that it's freaking July and I live in Florida and not the north part. So it was probably just almost 100 degrees with a heat index over 110 in the shade. So it just, it feels like being burned in a sweat box with all the humidity. And I didn't overheat a single camera. And these would be running on the carts in 4K or 4K, 60 or 4K 120 for like 10 to 20 minutes nonstop. And that's really impressive. Typically, I'd be overheating cameras like crazy. Now, just to be sure, I actually took this out and set it up next to the GoPro 11. And these were just like baking in the sun. So definitely a torture test because they're not getting any airflow from moving. And both of them definitely overheated pretty quickly. But I got just over 10 minutes on the GoPro 11 before it overheated. And the DJI Action gave me about another minute and a half before it bailed. 
Now, DJI does say that this is going to be better than other cameras in cold temperatures as well, but I haven't seen snow in a couple of years, so we're not going to test that today. But in the heat, I'm definitely going to give the edge to the Action 4. And as a little bonus, it's actually rated to 18 meters underwater without a housing, which is pretty significantly deeper than the GoPro 11, which is rated to 11 meters. And I beat these cameras up like crazy on this shoot. So when it comes to just being a rugged action camera, surviving heat, surviving cold, and the water, the Action 4, it's gonna be pretty awesome for that. Now, by far the single best thing to happen to action cameras, probably in the last three years, is gonna be this. This magnetic attachment adapter. It just makes hooking on your camera so easy. I think DJI first introduced this on the Action 2. I first use it on the Action 3. But it literally makes going back to any other system so hard because of just how much better that is. Every time I use this, probably the most convenient thing is just how it clips on. Like it never gets old, mostly because if you're going between mounts, my secret is to just throw one of these on all of my mounts. That way I can just unclip it from here, go straight to handheld, go straight to another area of the cart. So there's all kinds of things. Plus you can just snap it in vertically and you got your vertical shot. So like this is just the most convenient thing. Uh, sometimes I want to go and adjust my settings and I can snap it right on. It is just so easy to use and probably my favorite feature of the action camera. Now you will get two displays on the Action 4. So one on the back and then one on the front. Now what's unique to the Action 4 is that both of these are gonna be touch screens. And this is massive being able to access all of your settings on the front screen. I'd appreciate this a whole lot more if it just wasn't so easy to unclip the camera and clip it back. Because when the camera is mounted like on the cart or on a helmet, I just couldn't get to the back of the screen. So being able to control everything from the front screen or just being able to unclip the camera, access the settings and clip it back, it just made the usability of this so much better. Now you will get three different microphones in this with both mono or stereo recording. And all of the audio I recorded of the carts was recorded directly on this using the internal mic. So the wind noise reduction is actually really, really impressive. <laughs> Now in the stabilization, you have four different modes on here. This does use the Rocksteady 3.0 system. It's optimized slightly from like the last generation Action 3, but it's pretty much the same system. Now you can record your gyro data to do post stabilization with software like Gyroflow, and that's gonna be new. But with the built-in systems, you have the standard Rocksteady, which is probably what I use the most. Then you have Rocksteady Plus, which gives you a bit more stabilization, but it crops in a bit. And then you have your Horizon Balancing, which almost keeps your Horizon lock like you're using a gimbal. And that works as long as the camera doesn't roll by more than about 45 degrees. They do now have a full 360 degree Horizon Steady, which again, does the same thing as Horizon Balancing. It keeps that horizon locked, but now you can rotate the camera a full 360 degrees while maintaining that horizon. Now, it's not something I use all the time. Plus, it does limit the resolution in 1080p and it does have a pretty big crop. So again, not something I use personally. And I tend to like a bit of horizon movement because it makes you feel more like you're in the action. So I probably use the standard Rocksteady the most for like intense action sequences. It stabilizes everything, but you still get that immersive experience and it gives you the widest field of view. And then I'll use the Rocksteady Plus if I want more of that kind of floating sensation. Now you can purchase the Action 4 in a couple different ways. And I do have links in the description with all the different kit options that there are, plus all of the gear that we shot with. So for example, we use the Avada for like the FPV drone stuff. We use the new Air 3 for all the other kind of drone shots. Now, if you pick it up with like the standard kit, you're going to get the camera. It's going to come with this protective housing as well, which is what you're going to need in order to be able to mount this vertically. Plus it's going to include the battery and adhesive mount, which we use for the helmet. And then you get one of these magnetic adapters. Now, the other thing that you can do is get the adventure combo, which is this, and it comes with this really amazing three battery charger. I love having this case. It's 30 watts, plugs in USB-C, and you can charge three batteries really quickly, by the way. Plus you get an extension rod with that, and then you'll get two of these adapter mounts. And you can never have too many of these 
I'd actually probably recommend getting at least three or even one for every mount because just when you see how easy it is to just go between and click between mounts, you're just gonna get a ton of these. There's also quite a few things I haven't even mentioned. So the Action 4, it has time code. You can voice control. You can Wi-Fi live stream from this, your webcam functionality. And I don't even think it's close between how much better this is from other cameras on the market, but the interface, it's just amazing. You don't have to go through like multiple sub menus to get to exposure control. You can just dial in your settings so much better. And if you do want to customize a different setup, so maybe like for the helmet action camera, I wanted 4K24, standard rock steady, and a pretty wide field of view, I could just save that as a custom preset and then have quick access to it whenever I needed. So basically this is now everything that I love about the Action 3, just with better image quality from the larger sensor, and then a few extras here and there that just make this a better camera overall. But hit me up with your questions if you have any on this. Plus I do wanna get back to just making a bit more like tutorial videos and camera guides because it has been too long for that. And if you guys tell me like what camera you wanna see more of or software, I'll do it, so definitely let me know. Appreciate you guys hitting like and sub. It just really helps support me, keep me making videos. And honestly, quick tip, I haven't used 1080p that much because anything less than 4K just sounds cringy to me for some reason these days, but 240 frames per second with those cross carts can actually look pretty sick.